life itself has a purpose that is why we are born here that is why we love someone and get married to someone else we have babies but maybe we love someone else's child more than our own babies we have expectations from our kids but maybe a servant gives us more happiness we want to give charity to someone but maybe someone else steals money from us so life itself has a purpose money and fame never ever can change you they just magnify the person inside you if you are a cheap person once you get money with the money you will do cheap things if you want to check a person test a relationship give money what are the whatever the real person inside that person will get magnified and you will just know oh this person is like that that is why we say if you want to destroy a relationship give money people want to go to a forest they want to go to himalayas they want to go to ashram for being happy nonsense they can never be spiritual you have to understand when you go to a temple you look at krishna the krishna inside is invoked for few minutes few seconds or maybe an hour when you are in the temple so that statue of krishna is invoking the krishna inside you for some time whereas we don't we shouldn't be simulated because of that krishna to invoke the krishna inside the krishna is already there 24/7 the krishna's picture or a portrait or a photograph or a stone statue makes us remind us makes us remind us of the fact that oh we have to think about krishna oh god oh lord thanks i praise god is a system in practical terms it is self explanatory god is generate operate and destroy god is not a word it is short form of three words generator operator and destroy god doesn't exist like that it is a system come out of hanuman mandir hanuman temple and then you look at girls where is hanuman where is hanuman you have suddenly destroyed and disturbed the hanuman consciousness within you invoked it 10 minutes back and this consciousness is going to destroy you so be very careful when you worship hanuman be very careful when you worship krishna you have suddenly triggered a button from some dimension within you that consciousness place and you have invoked that energy if you do something different from that karma it will destroy you and if you do did veto with it it will give you amazing results Namaskar to all in presence and all those who have joined at YouTube. This is the last session uh, of our overseas travel in Canada, Ottawa. So today we have to discuss about a subject and have question and answers about the purpose of life and spirituality. These days people are getting upset about homes, about their jobs, about their family life. Uh, maybe they have ample money or maybe they have a trouble regarding money as well but then they give up at one stance of life they give up they get tired maybe fighting life and they get tired that they cannot change things around and about themselves themselves so they end up thinking that they are going to now be spiritual so what is being spiritual in this manner it is more of a person being an escapist not being spiritual spiritual means you are not to be upset about anything no more spiritual has nothing to do with happiness because it has nothing to do with unhappiness it has nothing to do with give it has nothing to do with take spiritual people are just like kids kids are very spiritual they keep no greed they keep no jealousy they keep no hatred they keep nothing they let it be they cry and forget if a kid can be spiritual then a saint can be spiritual as well but being a saint doesn't mean you have to run away to himalayas go to some ashram live in a temple you can live a normal life you can be in grihastha ashram you can have kids you can move around you can enjoy life being spiritual the biggest person who we have an example is krishna he lived all life all material life and still was detached that is the course of detachment that gita teaches us how to be spiritual spiritual means going nowhere just be not trying to be someone or something never trying to interfere in anybody's life krishna was basically murdered or killed by uh, arrow being shot in his leg in his feet to be precise and he didn't interfere in that as well we interfere in our kids life in our own personal lives our husband wife's lives we interfere in what god god is going to give us how life is going we love to interfere and then we claim that we want to be spiritual and in this journey of false and fake spirituality 
we end up being connected to some cult or some people who get together do some kirtan or do some sabha and think oh my god we 50 people are being spiritual now spirituality means just we you don't do gatherings you don't do nothing and you love it there is a great saying in zen philosophy that before i got gyani i had wisdom i used to sleep eat cut wood make food and then sleep again after being a gyani and having wisdom again being a master i slept i woke up i cut wood i ate food and then slept again earlier it was done unknowingly now i do it knowingly knowingly what knowing the mindfulness that doing is to be left and acceptance comes automatically when you surrender to certain things in life which you cannot control then you go with the flow and going with the flow means now the driver is god arjuna took a chance that yes i am ready to make krishna your my driver and he won mahabharata but this the chance comes only when some guru comes and recites some sort of gita to you and then you realize the basic problem is we are not ready to listen to anyone we are not ready to be disciple how can we have a guru we are not good listeners we don't understand and then we claim we are spiritual we are doing charities we go to gurudwara we go to mandir wherever that is not being spiritual understand this that, that only spirituality helps you being not unhappy it does not claim that you will be happy but it surely makes you not unhappy and once you learn this not unhappy thing that means you are no more transacting with anybody or anything around you not even your family we treat our kids as kids even if they have their own kids a 5 year or a 10 year old kid needs you no more for certain things a 15 year old kid maybe wants more freedom and 20 years depends but we still want to treat them as kids when we want to interfere in their lives and want them to interfere in our lives and then we again say we are religious or we are spiritual and we end up being troubled and then we look for god somewhere and god never comes there is nothing like god that will come and talk and teach you it is all about understanding you do understand what life is understanding is as precise as you can see with closed eyes as well that means there is something else inside us within us that can see oh, this lenses of eyes just enhance and give power to look at the material life it has nothing to do with the actual life within if you change inside the person inside then life will change outside all sorts of life exist outside us certain people are happy certain are healthy certain are unhappy certain people have good money and still they they are not happy certain people have big cars but they are upset about paying loans so basically it is because inside the microcosm the inside is disturbed that is why the outside is disturbed so why don't you choose to be one who can be not unhappy so if you are not unhappy then you have to understand your purpose of life has been attained people are usually upset about hunting up for the purpose of life what is the purpose of life i want a purpose of life we should fix there is no purpose of life life itself has a purpose because we never had any control in being born and we never will have control on being dead so how can we have control in between we have this false notion in our head that yes we will control once we are on this earth but we are actually not able to control anything at all it is a fictitious thought that yes i am controlling myself i am controlling my you cannot control your life your death your health your family your money it can be next day that you lose all money it can be next day that you have sickness you can have heart attacks they don't come and crawl in your life and say okay i am coming they just come an accident means suddenly it happens you never even thought of a lottery means suddenly it happens you never could think of it so life is not in our control life itself has a purpose don't hunt for a purpose in life if you keep hunting you'll get troubled because life will go in line a and you will keep hunting in line b then you'll be beaten bruised and you'll say oh now i'm getting spiritual i want to leave all this material life you don't want to leave all this material life you are fed up because you could not attain line b whereas life is still taking care of you there are people who are upset about money family and relationships why because those things are not happening as they want them to be 
Actually, everything is happening. They still have money. They still have family. They still have life. But since it is not happening as per their expectations or wish, they say, oh, it's a useless life. Now I'll be spiritual. Life itself has a purpose. That is why we are born here. That is why we love someone and get married to someone else. We have babies, but maybe we love someone else's child more than our own babies. We have expectations from our kids, but maybe a servant gives us more happiness. We want to give charity to someone, but maybe someone else steals money from us. So life itself has a purpose. It's all transactional. That's what for we are here on this earth. We never chose our parents. We will never choose our hospital or death. So how can we choose anything else? It's all an illusion. You have to understand. We must make the purpose of life that there should be no purpose to life as per me. Then Krishna will take care of your chariot and you will win the Mahabharata of your life. What will be the end result? Still nothing. Just ego games. That yes, I won Mahabharat. I won the kingdom, but then what? Still lost. So it's just a successful uh, quench of thirst of ego. And no more than that. It is the ego that tells you, yes, you have attained or accomplished something. something. It is the ego that says, make a goal. Oh, I want to have a house. Once we have a house, suddenly, cosmos makes us meet a person who has two houses. Now the one house is useless, nonsense, stupid. Now we have another fight. Oh, I make another goal. I must have two houses. Once you have two houses, cosmos makes you meet a person who has inherited a long, big property, a lots of money. Maybe someone who has a lottery and now you're again fed up of yourself, your life. And then you say, oh, I'll become spiritual. What the hell? So one property couldn't give you happiness. Two properties couldn't give you happiness. <laughs> then that means you don't choose to be happy because you are competing. And then you end up being spiritual. This is stupidity. This is telling myself a lie. And then we keep getting self-impressed and nonsense happiness comes in our life. The mirror is the biggest negative asset in our life because we go keep checking at the mirror how I look what I am certain people we want to keep just like a dog we want to keep them in our life who keeps to keep telling us oh you are great you're fantastic you're too good you are a bhakt you are the best person and they are just like mirrors stupid mirrors and they will keep camouflaging your own personality from yourself and you will keep living in illusions and that is where you will learn to be not happy. Spirituality means you have learned to be not unhappy. But we are masters in learning how to not to be happy. And that is what is, makes our life miserable. We have man, enough money. We live in AC cars. We move around. We travel the world. But still we have learned how to be not to be happy. That is where we lose a purpose of life. And we start creating a fictitious one for ourselves. And that is why we get banged. And we have bad deaths. We can have a fine birth, a good birth, but we should have a good death. If we die good, wow, what a purpose of life attained. You did whatever karma, bad karma, good karma, hell with bad or good karma. Krishna is the best example. Mahabharata is the best example. All nonsense karma was done and certified by God. Yeah, it's it. It's done. It is me who is doing it. That is what cosmos does. And usually people keep talking. Oh my God, I just don't understand why God doesn't listen to good people. First you have affirmed I am a good person. Who says you have to be good? No one. Muslims have their own God, Allah. Allah works for them. And then they say, this God is bad. It's okay. Jews have their own God. Hindus have their own God. People keep fighting. Your God is not good. My God, my God is good or better. But how that that does that make any difference to God? Nothing. You keep abusing the sun. Doesn't make difference. You keep saying, oh my God, sun, thanks. I'm watering you. Nonsense, stupidity. Sun has nothing to do with it. It will come and go, it will come and go. All through. That is cosmos. That is how perfectly universe is aligned. We need to be aligned. We ourselves within, in our subconscious, know that there are a lot of things we cannot control. We can't control day and night. We can't control our breath. We cannot control our uh, lives in many, man many manners. But whatever we, the mind makes us think, we can control this. We start doing stupidity and nonsense things and then we keep getting upset. And in this course, we learn to how to be not happy. That is why things, people around us and love doesn't give us happiness because we value them no more. A fish only learns what is an ocean for, for it 
then the ocean throws it away. So if you get a bad time and something like this happens in your life, maybe there is no returning back. That is why we need someone who can teach you. That is where the role of a guru comes, who can teach you what spirituality in fact means and what the purpose of life should be. When Arjuna lost all the purpose of his life, Krishna created a purpose for him. Why don't we become Arjuna? See, cosmos, God, Guru, whoever, maybe Krishna, they will create a purpose for you. And what you have to do? You have to get detached from yourself. Because the self will never leave you, you can leave it. And the way I am telling you have to leave, connect, connection or detachment, you have to create detachment with the self, means you have to create detachment with the mind. The mind will keep barking, keep shouting, keep telling you, keep creating illusionary things around you, keep alluring you, keep giving you lollipops. You just have to observe. And trust me, a lot of people have gained in life in regards to their love life, their personal life, their money life, automatically. Many people have done nothing. You think people who are extremely rich, they did something amazing in this life? No, it was God's hand. In one single life where you also enjoy 24 hours in a day and a very, very rich or a successful person enjoys the same time, how can he have more? It's God's hand. So why don't we work for the God's hand to be with us? And that can happen when we understand the purpose of life. The purpose of life we have to create is that we have to no more create a purpose in life. Let life create a purpose for you. And that is actually what life is doing. We end up buying something without even thinking because we are not buying, we are made to buy. Just like we are being breathed. We have never even taken a single breath in our life. We are being breathed by something or someone inside. We cannot sleep at our own will. Sleep comes if it wishes to. We can't wake up at our own wish. We suddenly wake up in the morning once the sleep cycle is over. So it is all not in our control. What are we trying to control? We are trying to create fictitious and fake and nonsense purposes of life. That is why life is disturbed. And we have learned amazingly how to be not happy. So once we understand this, we leave all goals behind. Certain people just want to boost their ego. They can say, I want to have a big car. Okay, fine. Take it. That's fine. Good. You can manifest. You can affirm. You can go for courses that how to manifest things, how to give affirmations. That will boost your ego. And you'll think, okay, that will bring happiness to you. There are many, many, many people whose kids have died in a new car that the father gave to him on his 21st birthday. He bad crashed and died. So don't think a car will give you happiness. A son or maybe a daughter will give you happiness. Happiness means if it's in your quota, you will have it. If not, then it won't be. So we have to learn to be not to be unhappy. Instead, we have learned how to be not happy. This is the only difference between being religious and being spiritual. Spiritual people do not bother whether they are happy or they are unhappy. Because they are just like observers. It is Leela for them. Leela means Krishna. Why do we call Krishna's uh, life Leela? Because he did whatever. A lot of things our logical mind doesn't understand. He did wrong, he did right, he did whatever. It's Leela. So, and that means it's a full package. Everything and anything is allowed. So let it be. Ultimately, we usually say, let it be. Go to hell. I'm upset. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. That means you've given up. Wow, amazing. So this is a beauty. Once we, have, we give it, give up, we have we have, start, we have taken one step ahead to learn to surrender and accept things. Maybe even if it is a wrong start, doesn't make difference. And the second thing, if we in life say, I am confused, you must be thankful to God that now you are confused. Because confused means that today, at this day, when I am confused, my old mind, which used to operate my life, is not able to process the situation today. And since you are not going to tackle the situation with the old mind that you have, you suddenly get confused. That means a new mind is on the way and you will have a version 2.0 of yourself soon. Confusion is a great asset because we are living with a fixed stone mind and it never gets confused. It tries to tackle whatever comes across in life with the same philosophy, with the same thing, gets hammered again and again and we learn to be not happy again and again. Otherwise, if you think it out, kids are happy. Why they are happy? Because they are not trying to control life. They are not trying to control anything. 
they sleep when they feel like they eat when they feel like they cry when they feel like they get angry when they feel like we don't know what we feel like that is why we are upset and unhappy so it's better to be confused rather than operating with the same nonsense mind that has brought unhappiness in our life that is what we have to learn and understand if this we do life becomes an asset so being spiritual means you are enjoying life more and more a spiritual person is one who can enjoy anything whether it tastes good or it doesn't it does not matter so being spiritual you have to no more go to a cult if you want to that's your choice you no more have to understand that i am bound to go to a temple it's all material you're going to a temple for a reason oh god grant me a car grant, grant me happiness grant me something god is not going to grant it's transactional if it is in your fate you will because you have suddenly got whatever you have got you are crying and craving for what you have not as the mind says since my neighbor has a car i must have the mind suddenly says what's the neighbor buys a car and then you start praying to god do chaliya and other things oh god i want this car i want a car then once and if it comes then you say oh you know big story i have manifested it you know i wrote it on my vision board and i did this did that now ask them how many things you got manifested writing on your vision board one and then you are boasting about it you still have unhappy because you now you have learned to compete in a in a higher way with richer people or maybe people who are more unhappier than you so you will end up being more unhappier let life choose a purpose being spiritual means you are just be i am being calm means spiritual anything that has happened has not changed a thing inside you that is being spiritual and then you can enjoy life. you can do whatever you can eat drink enjoy whatever does not make difference you get away from good and bad you get away from sin you get away from bad or uh, ugly anything and everything is okay for you it's okay for example we have uh, winters here terrible winters but it's okay we have accepted it in africa it is too 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 hot people are still living there it's okay once who says it's okay you end up being you end up being at a better place automatically because you are vibrating saying it's okay so cosmos make sure you go to a place which is okay so basically if you have got a good uh, partner you are vibrating oh it's okay the partner will get good if you are vibrating i am okay god will make you happy will give you more things that is what manifestation is manifestation is we attract it automatically you must have seen a beggar he takes a handkerchief puts it down on the ground and throws some coins those some coins are of great value if that handkerchief is chief is empty there is nothing on it nobody will even uh, watch it or observe it once a person sees oh there are few coins he takes one coin outside and throws it that is how more coins attract less coins that is how we attract things whatever we have in life is what we have attracted and that is what we is we are vibrating as we keep affirming nonsense things i want this i want that still god doesn't give because we are not vibrating on that frequency that is what unhappiness is all about being spiritual enjoy life people create gatherings these days it's good to be social it's fantastic but you have to analyze are you happy after that or maybe have you learned to not to be unhappy after that if you have learned that okay continue that's great that's lovely why do people have to say i go to a mandir i go to a gurudwara i feel peace oh that is conditioned peace so that means now your body has got into this uh, it is like you say you take nicotine you take the caffeine and then your body is pumps up so you go to a gurudwara and then only you can be happy you go to a mandir and then only you can be happy you are happy you are you just okay fine the amazing part is uh, elder people don't like kids being happy at home because they say you are happy no you can't be happy how can you be happy you have to go to a temple you have to go to a gurudwara recite this mantra go to that gathering only then you can be happy they just don't understand how the help the kid is happy and they teach him how to be unhappy 
and then they want the kid to be a kid even if the kid is 20 30 40 years old they want to control the life because they couldn't control their life they didn't let god control their life they kept expecting expecting and expecting so they basically satisfy their ego thinking oh i'll control the life of my kid i'll make my kid this or that that is where nonsense starts we are not able to control our life stabilize even ours and then we want to control and stabilize someone else's life let god decide and the prime thing is are you good enough that god will decide for you that is where the example of arjun comes that is where bhagavat there is a book by name bhagavat puran it is stories about god there can be nonsense stories but it is just as a symbolic stories metaphors that yes god takes care of the kids who are kids to god so we have to be kid we have to learn when to let go you must have seen in the animal kingdom when a bird gives uh, gives birth to uh, its kids the bird throws them off away from the nest the giraffe kicks off uh, her kids they go go in the jungle live that is what what is to be done we don't we don't let go and then when the kids eat us up like parasites they have already eaten the bodies in the in the womb and when they grow up they are eating us our heads are being eaten why because we want them to be oh my god i'll make my kid a big doctor or an engineer that's fate then people can have this question that means we shouldn't take care of our kids no your choice but you will see the most successful kids on this earth their parents were maybe dead or maybe they couldn't take care of them and they are more successful than the ones whose parents took care of them strange that means god took care of them so let god decide but you have to get connected to the god and god will only and only drive your chariot if 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 you surrender and accept bow down to god that means you bow down to life you go with the flow uh, you will learn to how to be not unhappy and that is happiness the minimum amount of unhappiness means you are already happy something like happiness doesn't exist that's a mere word that becomes bliss that anand that bliss is what spirituality gives you stop caring stop caring that will create anxiety god is already taking care of you you wake up every morning you are breathing you are still breathing something or someone inside you is already taking care of you how the hell you want to create an interference in another person's life it's a great saying people uh, change when money comes in their life or maybe fame or success whatever money and fame never ever can change you they just magnify the person inside you if you are a cheap person once you get money with the money you'll do cheap things if you are a miser you with more money you will become most injured if you love to give with money you will become a charitable person a whole charitable institution money power fame they will only magnify the actual quality inside you so doesn't make difference you have to work upon you the person inside what will extra money give it will only magnify things in you you buy a car more money you buy a bigger car that's it nothing else so what we are running after as material things money power fame they are just going to magnify what you are if you want to check a person test a relationship give money what are the whatever the real person inside that person will get magnified and you will just know oh this person is like that that is why we say if you want to destroy a relationship give money very rare very few people will get that and those who get money back are the ones who give money it comes back or doesn't so it has to come back when you let go a pigeon the pigeon will come back to you when the because the pigeon knows this person is going not going to strangle me put me in a cage when the pigeon knows this person is again going to put me in cage it will run away so whatever you let go must come to you that is how god's life god's principle of life works you let go your breath it comes back you can try an experiment don't let go your breath something inside you will push 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 okay let go let go let go but if you squeeze your nose 
cover it up, you will die, you will suffocate. So let go, it will get refilled. You just don't let go. More money, more power will only magnify the real you inside. You have a question? We have a kid here who is playing, listening to the class, but the prime good part is he is 9 years old and he is still interested in talking, uh, in listening to these talks. See the sanskar that are going to be uh, inherited in him. He is a kid. Why is he sitting in a class where we are talking about purpose of life and talking about spirituality? Come, come on the camera you want. It's okay. Be shy. So why is he sitting? Maybe he understands, maybe he doesn't, but that is the seed he has. Understand after 10 years of his age, maybe when he's 15 or 20 years, how good he will grow in this thing. And he will learn to let go. Such people become rich. Rich with health, rich with power, rich with money, whatever. Because they have, they will learn early, the earliest they will learn how to not to be unhappy. This is the beauty of understanding. This is wisdom. This is being spiritual. We go to a lot of temples. We go to a lot of gatherings. Oh, these days we will have a Kirtan, we bhajan. Has the life improved? Then what are you doing there? Just making a social circle, proving, oh, uh, this is a religious party. It is called a religious party. It's a religious party where we drink juice, not wine. It's a religious party and people gather and they just talk about Whatever best they are doing. They will wear their best clothes, they'll wear the jewelry and then they'll they'll go and do Hare Ram Sita Ram. You have to become Ram. You have to have that Maryada. If you want to worship Hanuman, you have to have that Maryada, that sanskar, that nature, the person innate inside you, the Hanuman consciousness, and then you will be able to move the mountains. That is how strong your mindset should be. You have to have one pointed attention. All those who have done something new on this earth, they had one pointed attention. They created goals in their life and they thought that only and nothing else. And that is where God came in between, helped them and they invented, discovered and did new things for mankind. Learn to let go, that is being spiritual. Do not bother about being happy or unhappy. People want to go to a forest, they want to go to Himalayas, they want to go to ashram for being happy. Nonsense, they can never be spiritual. Look at kids and you will learn what spirituality is. They are, they just are. They just are. They don't bother about the fashion, they don't bother about the car, they are. They are just happy. You give them a toy, it can, brings them immense happiness. A small car, a toy car gives them happiness. Can we be like that? That is being spiritual. And you can enjoy whatever. You don't have to take vanvas or go to some, some, some samyasa ashram. Nothing. That is stupidity. I have a question. Yep. I, I generally try to meditate. Uh, again, I am trying to become spiritual. So I was trying to meditate by, you know, by sitting at one place, looking at a plant. You know, by looking at a plant, I feel the plant when it's when it's there, it's just it's just there. So when you're looking at the plant and you try to see the same thing inside you, just be where you are. But somehow the mind is so fluctuating, it keeps forgetting and it keeps coming back to with all the thoughts and everything inside you, right? But I find to be to looking at a plant, you know, a very very uh, soothing experience. But is there an easier way for the mind to be calm or any, any special guidance on that? You are trying to meditate, you are trying to be spiritual. Can you try to pick this pillow? Just, you have picked it up. I said, can you try to pick it up? Because what you are saying is, I am trying to be spiritual. Hmm. Can you try to pick the pillow? Will you actually pick it up ever in life if you keep trying? Okay. So see, you don't even understand what you are saying. You don't even know how wrongly you are vibrating. You are trying to do. That means you will never do. You will keep trying to be spiritual throughout your life. You will keep going to satsang. And you will attain zero, nothing, no inner peace. Rather maybe a happiness as well because you are trying. All of us are trying to make a kid understand. We are trying to be happy. 
you can't uh, you are to try this now you have given command to your body i am going to try to eat food you are either you eat food you either you don't eat food you can try this is the catch mm. this is wisdom in spite of trying to be spiritual you just be you are spiritual this surface is clean even if there is dust on it it is still clean the dust is on it surface is still clean remove the dust the surface is clean so you have to remove the nonsense of religiousness and you are spiritual who is breathing inside you you are not breathing no one of us is breathing we are being breathed that is the spirit inside us so we are spiritual so you keep trying and you'll end up being nowhere and once you try your hand will get tired the pillow will never be in your hand you'll keep trying i'm trying to pass a kid who has done fantastic preparation for his exams the mother says okay my baby try to do your best the kid would have done his best now the new command has come try to do his your best the brain listens to it that is the subconscious mind now he's trying to do the best and he loses 10 marks questions just because he's now going to try to do his best he should have done his best that is one pointed attention that is what you have to be. you have to be stupid you are trying to be spiritual wrong question who the hell are you okay tell me who the hell are you hell sorry to say who the hell are you like it's just a uh, word to say are you saying there should be no consciousness of a purpose yeah pardon me come again please are you saying that we should not be conscious of our purpose uh we should not be okay you are saying that i am trying to say no i am just saying what our students what what are we to understand should we not be conscious of a purpose that we want to have beautiful question you have asked should we be not conscious about the purpose we have who is this we i am talking general me or anybody I okay just want to have, want to have your interpretation who do you think this for example you have just cited it we should not be conscious of our purpose who is this we i'm talking you know the society general people family individuals which okay, have in indi- to take an individual individuals collectively create a society when we talk of an individual who is this we in the con- in the individual who is asking this question for example even if i am the person i am saying we should not be conscious of the purpose of our purpose oh, i should not be when i say i should i not be conscious of my purpose yeah Let's so so for example you are very right in saying if you say i am not conscious or we actually speaking there are we inside us there is i and then there is god consciousness that becomes we yes, god con- i cannot be there's no identity unless there is the other it is duality is duality yeah. i mean i i cannot say i if i'm alone in the world there i'm not an identity but if there is somebody else then then i perfect then i perfect. am perfect that is the we inside us one is the me who realize i am this person i am a male i am a female my name is this this is i then there is another one who is breathing inside that to become we so now we say we should be aware of the co- about the purpose the con- about the consciousness and the purpose of the consciousness or should we be not even if we are aware of our consciousness even if we are not aware of the consciousness the consciousness is yeah. now about the purpose of consciousness the purpose the consciousness has no purpose except keeping us alive giving us life the purpose is always of i it is the i inside me the mind inside me that wants to create a purpose if the consciousness flows along we manifest if the consciousness does not support we don't know how to contain and continue with the consciousness within we it doesn't manifest so that is why i cry we don't i cry and when we say we should not be conscious about the purpose of life are we meaning this no i should not bother about the uh, purpose of my life because consciousness itself has a purpose and the i inside me will create a purpose automatically with the time 
even if we sit idle, suddenly something will happen in life. Some episode will happen. We will get up. We will do something. We are forced to do something. So even if we sit idle, do nothing, we still will be creating a purpose. So that is God consciousness. That is the V. The God consciousness creating purpose with I and we will get manifested manifestations. We usually end up manifesting stupid things, nonsense things and uh, miseries for us because we are not aware of this we. So you are very right in saying we should be or not because this bifurcation is most important. It is the I who is creating a purpose. I have my child, another I has his or her child, another one has his or her child. Then there is another person who says, okay, you all are like my child. I want to do this. Why? Because I want to satisfy I inside me. My mind will get satisfied if I am able to do this. So every time we are fixing a challenge. Out of 10, we end up being successful in one and that keeps driving us. In usually 8 or 9, we are unsuccessful. And that is why we have learned to be not happy. The other question I have is that you talked about being Krishna and so on. And yet on the other hand, you said, um, why do you go to the temple and say Hare Krishna or whatever? So what are we to understand by that? Beautiful. This is an amazing question. I'll reframe it that I have said that uh, you have to talk about Krishna. You have to think about Krishna. And, why, and still we say, why do we have to go to temple to talk to uh, look at Krishna's picture or photograph or murti? You have to understand, when you go to a temple, you look at Krishna. The Krishna inside is invoked for a few minutes, few seconds or maybe an hour when you are in the temple. So that statue of Krishna is invoking the Krishna inside you for some time. Whereas we don't, we shouldn't be simulated because of that Krishna to invoke the Krishna inside the Krishna is already there 24-7. The Krishna's picture or a portrait or a photograph or a stone statue makes us remind us. Makes us remind us of the fact that, oh, we have to think about Krishna. Oh God, oh Lord, thanks, I praise. That, sh that gap should be uh, fulfilled. Because we are created and creating a gap. We are dependent upon going to a temple and then being in gratitude with Krishna for a few hours or few minutes. We should be 24-7 with Krishna. We won't need to go to a temple. Temple just reminds us of Krishna for some time. Krishna or Guru Nanak or whoever. That is where a sannyasi, a sadhu or a spiritual person lives 24-7 with that Krishna consciousness within. Which actually is already there even if you think about it or not. But we love to go to a temple and excite those feelings in us. Oh, I am now close to Krishna and then we think wow I go every day to temple you should you should rise above going to a temple you can go to a temple that's a beautiful thing at least you go to a temple for some time at least every day you are doing this this is fantastic but if you are within that consciousness 24 7 you can our Sanatan Dharma says even a tree has God a dog has God within anything and everything has God that means you live with the consciousness with the, with the gratitude 24 7 that is a higher state of being. That is being spiritual. When you understand life is 24-7 with you, you remember life for a few minutes, few seconds, or maybe few hours in a day. But you have to know, even if you remember it for 10 minutes or 10 hours, it still is going to be for 24 hours. So once you understand this, then God takes care of your chariot and you are being driven by Krishna or whoever your chosen God is. That is God consciousness. So the I and the V part, they are lost. That is being spiritual. Because the spirit is taking care of our life. Life, spirit is equal to life. No spirit, no life. That is called we cease to exist. We cease to exist. V means the mind and the spirit, they are separated. So V is over. I am no more. That is death. And when you say let go, so like if we have teenager kids, like we cannot, we will, we feel like okay, if we are going for a gathering and they will always say no, because, yeah, we like meeting people and they will say no, but we feel like we also need to socialize and then even when it comes to their studies, we feel like we need to tell that if you study, then you will get marks, then you will get a good university, but we cannot just 
because of his pay. I don't think they have that much. The question is that they have kids who are young kids. And when they want to take them outside, they want them to have social gatherings. They want to guide them what should they study, how they should study. And that is how they get good university and other things X, Y, Z. So kids don't listen to them. So primarily, the kid age has changed now. Because a kid can operate a cell phone at that age more than what we can. Which we never, because we never had a cell phone at 10 years of age. A 10 year old kid can operate a better cell phone function than us. Because he has got that at an earlier age. Mm. They have learned to be self-dependent. They can do things on their own. The generation gap is there. Generation has changed. Now you, your mind is running, your life is running as per a program. We are all living in a simulation. Our mind has a program. Your mind is programmed to say, uh, they must study. Only then they will get good universities. And only then that is possible that they will earn money. So that is your programming. So your programming is wrong. You have to understand. I am not claiming yours is wrong. I am sorry to say. But yours is not wrong or right. I am no one to judge it. But for example, you must know your programming is wrong. Only then you will change this program. Otherwise you will keep hitting your kids all the time. Come, go socialize. Must eat this. Don't eat this. You must know this. In China and Japan, people eat octopus. People live on wine. Don't even drink water. And they are fine. In India, we eat roti. In Italy, they eat pizza. In India, it is said, oh, you'll eat, keep eating pizza, your intestines will get blocked. It is all programming. So you are running under a wrong program. We are not here talking about which program you are running in. Because I am nowhere God consciousness will run your program. Why do you have to bother and worry? So explain the difference between guidance and interference. Oh, beautiful. Uh, the question is the difference between guidance and interference. One is care, one is control. When you care for someone, you are giving guidance, the person follows or not, doesn't make difference. And when you are interfering, that is you are wanting to control them. You are forcing them to do this and claiming this to be care. When you care for someone, God cares for us. We think so. God must be caring for us. Because our body heals automatically. We do get sick. God heals us automatically. Life heals us automatically. We sleep automatically. We wake up automatically. We feel hungry automatically. We feel full automatically. So God does what? But does God interfere in our life? He doesn't say, don't eat this, don't eat that. Your choice. Oh, don't be a Muslim, don't be a Hindu, don't be... No, your choice. You choose whatever God you want. You can choose no, no God also. I'm still going to be there. Does the sun interfere in your life? It comes at your home and says, I'll burn you. You fought with your wife yesterday. The son says, I am doing my duty. That is dharma. You do your dharma. That is your karma. You don't change your illuminosity, your heat according to a place. The sun shines as it shines. That is why we have weathers on earth. That is why we have life on earth. On other planets it doesn't. Because our axis is tilted. The sun is not going to interfere in anybody's life. It is going to be there. Just be. It will care for you. You have to learn to be careful. My father cares for me. My mother cares for me. I have to be careful about their care. If I am intelligent, I will be fine. If they are intelligent, they will never want to control me. They will bless me. Because I am from their DNA. That is what parents have to know. I need to bless my son. I need to bless my daughter. Do we bless? We keep cursing. Oh my God, I'm fed up with my son, I'm fed up with my daughter, I'm fed up with my wife, I'm fed up with my husband, I'm fed up with my dog. We are fed up, fed up, fed up.com course. We have done degree honors, MBAs in being fed up. Why? We should bless ourselves. That is what usually, these days it is propagated. Okay, bless yourself. I am fine, I feel free. These affirmations, what do they mean? They mean get blessed and keep blessing. We keep cribbing. Oh my God, how do we meet ends? How much money we need? I don't have money. We keep doing this job. I don't have money. I don't have money. I don't. And then money is lost. We have to understand the difference between care and control. That is God is guiding us. God doesn't interfere. We can choose the wrong path. That's our choice. We get beaten up. We get shaken up. And then God lets us be. That is where the word wisdom comes in between. We develop wisdom. We gain the sharpness of brain. 
and then we become diplomatic. We are better to tackle things. A successful person means he can tackle things because he has learned the hard way. If you say I am good, good means you are stupid. No God was good. All God did extremes. They were not stupid. We can claim. A lot of people say Krishna was not good. Ram was not. A lot of people can say anything. Does Krishna and Ram bother about it? The least bother. When Krishna was, he never bothered. About Ram, they have several stories. They never bothered. When you are a king, when you are God, you do not bother. That is the principle of third eye. We have this eye, then we have this eye. There is a yes eye, there is a no eye. There is a third eye which says, I don't bother. There is a Sushumna Nadi in us, which is the central Nadi. Neutron, proton, electron, that is neutral. It says, I don't bother. That is where the cosmic connection happens. There is a Pingla Nadi, which says, yes. Then there is a Ida Nadi, which says, no. So we inside have, yes, no, yes, no. The serpent is climbing, that is Kundalini Shakti, which is having three and a half folds in the lower chakras. Once it rises up, it goes yes, no, yes, no. That is how the serpent climbs up. But where is the central point? I do not bother. Where does the Sushumna Nadi cross? Here. The Pingala and the Ida Nadi, they end up here. The Sushumna climbs up and goes to the Sahasrara. The Sushumna is the one which says, this is the third eye now. Third eye means I do not bother. If you have to have common sense, you do not bother. But we are too much bothered. We are all the time bothered. What's happening in my neighbor's house? What's happening in Israel? What's happening on Mars? What is Elon Musk planning? When you don't bother, you stop bothering in your life, the third eye comes into play. Whenever you are in deep thoughts, automatically the body closes these two eyes. It says like this. Oh, and then the fingers go here. It doesn't go here. It won't go here. It goes here. You are rubbing the third eye, you don't want to bother anymore, you want to have an answer from the cosmos, the cosmos gives you an answer. That is why these two eyes, yes and no eyes, closed. This is where the spirit exists, this is being spiritual. This is materialistic. These are the two lenses that make you look outside. This makes you look inside. Dreams don't come outside because eyes are closed. Dreams come inside because this is covered. That is Shiva. When a baby is born, when and how is the ego created or the I is created in a baby? Beautiful. When the baby is born, born when is when and how the ego the I is created in the baby. When a baby is born, the baby is without the I. The baby is just going to live a transactional life. Uh, in the old times when there was there were kings, people used to be slaves. So once a baby was born to a slave, uh, it was deemed that the baby is also going to be a slave for the next gen. And they were trained, they were told, you have no identity, you are nothing, you are the king is God actually. And you have to be a slave. That is how pyramids and other great entities were made. Great Wall of China and other things. Because they were told, you are, you don't exist. Even your wife belongs to the king, your life belongs to the king, your identity belongs to the king. You can die in king's name. That is what samurai uh, culture was all about. So you have to be trained to have an eye. Otherwise you can be trained to be a camel. You can be trained to be a dog. You can be trained to be a slave. That is what can be done. So the ego has to be created. It has to be nurtured. That is what our parents say. When, when you meet a kid and you give a kid something, the kid learns, okay, I have to give as well. So usually in the early stages of being a kid, when you give a kid four trophies, four chocolates, the kid goes and gives to others as well. But when you teach, no, it's yours, don't give to others, then the kid keeps. And then we say, oh my God, what a dirty kid we have. Doesn't share anything with anyone because we have taught, oh, get better than your friend. His job, look at his job, look at his marks. That is when the ego gets boosted up. That is what we have learned very well. The ego has to be nurtured and created. But the right kind of ego was nurtured in a gurukul with a guru. Where they knew I have to have an identity at that much of gravity within so that my body doesn't break down. 
great saints who let their egos go off, their bodies broke down and they all usually died of cancer because the body could not correct or heal itself because they did not bother about the body. So the body said, okay boss, I'm leaving you. Ram Krishna Paramans, Vivekanand, uh, Guru Ramana Maharishi, all those guys with, with cancer. They were great saints, still they had cancer because the ego was lost. The personal identity was crushed and nothing enticed them. They said, oh, it's okay. I'm fine to die with as well. So death came, they manifested death, they died. It did not bother them. That was third eye. When death also cannot bother you, you become great saints. You have a midas touch. Your blessings change life of people. That is what we have to know. We all have that power. But do we exercise it? No. We usually use these two lenses. We seldom use this one. This is a YouTube question. If we cannot control things, so how does manifestation work? If we cannot control things, how does manifestation work? Certain times when we hit that Sushumna Nadi within us, we think, we want, we tell the cosmos, we breathe within, we inhale and we vibrate that way and suddenly that message is struck in the Sushumna Nadi unknowingly, it manifests. That is why a lot of negative things get manifested and we, thought, we say, oh my God, I just had a dream, I just thought four days back this will happen. Oh my God, this happened, so sorry, I don't know how this could happen. I had an intuition, you create everything all the time. We notice only a few. We are creating our life 24-7, all through our life. We notice a few then, few of them only. That is what awareness, the word awareness is all about. Do you notice what you are doing? Did you think what you thought? That is Sakshi Bhav, that is mindfulness. What do you get out of manifestation? You will manifest worldly things, that's it. So, even they will die one day. Because any material thing that comes to life will have duality. It can never be singularity. It, is, it has to have duality. So that means if it brings happiness, it will bring unhappiness. That is why people who get married and are neutral about marriage, they never get unhappy in marriage. People who are very happy, oh God, I'm getting married. They get very unhappy, oh, oh my God, why did I get married? Because duality must come together. That is the principle of life. Day and night follows each other. Day came before, night came before, it's like chicken and egg. No one knows. Please. Yeah, okay. Should we seek for wisdom or blessing or for both? Should we ever should we go for seeking something or everything will come? Like because I don't know the concept of whether it is uh, through wisdom you can get blessing or vice versa. So what we should do? Uh, <laughs> yes. Whether we should get wisdom, look for wisdom or we should look for blessings. We should stop looking. Uh, seeking? Yes, we should stop seeking. Because when you reach the le that level of seeking, you will be seeked. Because we are here for a transactional life. Munna, the mind, the karmic process, the prarabh will force certain things in your life. Oh my God, this has to happen at this timeline. You stop seeking. It will make you seek. It will give you opportunities. It will create circumstances automatically. And when you will not respond, it will die its own death because everything has a timeline. You can be 21 years old only on the 21st birthday. Then it can never repeat again. So whatever it is in your timeline, it never comes back again. Then you become 22. Can you become 22 years old after being 21 years old in 10 days? Can you just be born old? You will have your first birthday only after first year, then second year. It is unchangeable. You cannot control it. We cannot control a lot of things. We think we are controlling, we are manifesting. No, we are not. It is being self-manifested at certain times. Those who learn this, it is called wisdom. Now they can do. Those people manifest things. They understand. They know how to crack the code. And they manifest. And that, if you don't know, then it comes with blessings. Either you have wisdom to do it yourself. 
either you are blessed so take blessings blessings means what you are you you can lift only 10 kgs of weight you you look at a person who can lift 40 kgs now if he blesses you won't he help you in picking 50 kg so you get blessed that is taking help of someone else when we talk about blessing blessing is an energy we can't see it it's an energy god is an energy people keep asking the wrong question can you show me god uh, well we can show the show god as well that is another story we can have that uh, talk some other time but yes god is energy the same way if you take blessings it's energy we are energized parents don't even know they can bless their kids they keep cursing them instead and they don't know what is this this is being unaware and if you are aware of it that is called wisdom so simple never worry about your kids those who have learned to not to worry they are blessed thank you so another question on youtube is it all destiny or does free will exist mm, beautiful very debatable <laughs> is it all destiny or does free will exist uh, we have been made to understand that there is something called free will whereas our scriptures have told us it is all karma what ram did came back to krishna what karna did came back to him what dron did came back to him what bhishma did came back to him and that is how what uh, past life regression also propagates it tells us that yes this was done by you in some past life and that is what has come back so something like free will is as much if you tie a horse with a 1 km long rope now the horse can gallop do stupidity sit idle do whatever in 1 km area that is his free will so is it really a free will these are my hands i have my free will to do at this distance of my hands whatever i feel like beyond that do i have a free will no i don't have but this is my free will so free will is a wrong question or a wrong word in itself it is a it is a obstructed free will it is like a controlled free will it is it is a peripheral free will so you decide your periphery and then you have a free will in that much arena you can you usually ask your kid okay go to the basement and play that is the free will of the kid but don't come upstairs so now the kid has a free will subjected to his periphery he has been told be in the basement be in your room but you have a free will there so that is what free will, free will is all about free will doesn't means it is unlimited because this body cannot travel to places it has limitations it walks slowly the mind as a then we talk about free will on the mental terms on the mental body strength i'm talking about the mental body we talk about the free will yes the mind has a free will mind can travel in different dimensions ba- back and forth it can go anywhere so the mind has a free will that is how we can become creators so our mind with our mind we can do anything this mind can meditate and actually speaking the mind is meditating 24/7 on something because we are always thinking of something we are thinking of x then y then b then d no meditating so what i start i start with x then i think about b and then i stop at d then i keep thinking about d now the mind is meditating on d this is called meditation the mind is continuously thinking about i'm throwing electrons from my mind the mind waves are traveling on single trajectory that is d so the point d has been meditated by the mind for 10 minutes or 10 hours we meditate on our life we keep thinking about some specific point for 10 hours every day for 2 hours every day so we are meditating we will soon manifest it and that will happen that is how people create good things and bad things in their life there's nothing like free will so this is a really nice question it's very simple what is god what is god beautiful now the question as this what is god so first of all we have to if we have to answer it we have to understand who has asked this question what is the mindset of the person who has asked this what is god because this person has a thought which says okay this is god for me so now they want to know what is god god is a system in practical terms it is self explanatory god is generate operate and destroy god is not a word it is short form of three words generator operator and destroyer god doesn't exist like that 
it is a system okay you climb down you reach the basement you climb up you reach the second floor this is a process so the, everything has to generate then operate and destroy so this is a cycle of life that is god nothing else so when we talk of god it is a cycle of life it is not about some special entity or some or some spiritual being oh my god something like a thing who is there in some dimension god is a system day and night the day comes operates dead night comes operates dead that is god god is a system god is krishna is not god krishna is a consciousness hanuman is a consciousness they are avatars they are so powerful welded avatars in their own ways that we say they are the epitome of that consciousness ram had a maryada amazing people can say he was not a good king or a bad person or a bad husband but amazing consciousness he is stuck to it he was like a wall he did he was unmoved unshaken krishna he broke all rules that is another type of consciousness they are consciousness so which consciousness you follow you worship hanuman come out of hanuman mandir hanuman temple and then you look at girls where is hanuman where is hanuman you have suddenly destroyed and disturbed the hanuman consciousness within you invoked it 10 minutes back and this consciousness is going to destroy you so be very careful when you worship hanuman be very careful when you worship krishna you have suddenly triggered a button from some dimension within you that consciousness place and you have invoked that energy if you do something different from that karma it will destroy you and if you do did veto with it it will give you amazing results so we can say god is god is finish this is the answer god you said before it's energy god is energy that's what you said yeah god is energy And when we say Shiva, like because you know Krishna and Ram both are there, but sometimes we say okay, Shiva was, she was Brahman, then Shiv is energy. Well. Shiv means all inclusive. <laughs> Shiv means all inclusive. All. All means what? Matter, anti-matter. All dark matter. All. Shiv means the whole. All. Shiv means universe. Anything beyond universe also. Shiv means all. A word that means nirakar. Nirakar means infinity. You have seen zero. How we write? We write zero like this. How we write infinity? Two zeros. Matter, anti-matter, minus and plus, both are blended together. Singularity. Anything will erupt from sing from singularity. Then becomes duality, and then duality will give birth. singularity is energy form duality is thing this chair is a thing this body is just a vessel that my consciousness is using to talk what i am talking can be seen what you hear you can feel only so something inside you is feeling that is what that is the singularity existence of singularity the interpreter can interpret in different ways so there are a lot of minds in us whatever you want to this we want means the program inside you what program yours is you have a jainism following program you have a islamic program you have a christian program what program how you have been programmed that is your program then you think not beyond it spirituality means there is no beyond there is no program anything and everything is okay that is sanatan The last question, sir. Okay. If there is no such thing as good or bad, so no non-duality, we're talking about duality. How is good or bad karma decided? Beautiful, beautiful, amazing. I'm really amazed, and I'm very thankful to God. People have so much awareness to ask such questions. The depth of the question itself is amazing. The question says, how do we decide? Who decides what is good and bad? When I say, as me. there is nothing like good or bad it's like if you eat meat and you think that it is bad i eat meat who eats meat the body eats meat below below and beyond this portion of our body the body does not go know what it's eating when we excrete we excrete always the same thing we excrete dirt out of the body you eat the best food you drink the best wine you never 
eat good food you take take an healthy food you never drink wine excretion has to be same urination and excretion will be same so the body does not recognize beyond this point what you are eating or drinking body has its organs the body has a organ called liver which detoxifies alcohol in your body that means someone who made this body knew that we are fit to take alcohol we are fit to take alcohol so that the bile breaks the alcohol alcohol is the best intoxicant that the liver washes away strange how does does the liver know you have to wash it away that means somewhere from wherever we came this organ was planted in us that is what we say somras devtas they take somras they take alcohol that is usually there. however somras is different but that is what has been told usually so the body does not know beyond this point what it is going to eat it makes energy and excretes everything out so it does not make difference so now you are programmed to not to eat meat so your program says eat meat i have eaten oh god that's bad this is recorded so that is recorded in your memory if you have eaten something 20 years back from some place the mind still knows you have forgotten it after the day you ate it 20 years later you go to the same spot the mind says hello i am opening the files 20 years back file i have opened and you know you ate it with one of your school friends the file is there you don't don't remember no problem but the file gets stored in it's written in the brain okay you have eaten meat you have done a sin now your mind is again programmed you did a sin this is bad you will have sickness automatically the mind opens another file and says okay i'm triggering sickness because he has done a sin now we have we were programmed earlier in our life if you eat meat for 10 times in life or maybe 10 times in a month you will get sick your leg will break your eyes will go blurry or whatever after the 10th time automatically the sickness comes in the body it is depicted in the body so it is the program which tells us this is a sin or this is not it is good or bad if we are programmed no there is nothing bad about it it is not so we are the creators of sin we are the creators of pap and punya good karma and bad karma those who attained moksha those who attained swarg it is not necessary they went to chardham there were enlightened souls in all types of religions of this earth there were sufi saints there were christian uh, monks there were tibetan people all sort of people who attained moksha salvation or whatever words we can say there had been saints in all sorts of religions and there had been negative souls in all sorts of religions as well we say ravan was a very learned uh, person a learned soul how could he be learned if he did stupidity that is how we are taught so but these are just saying we are programmed always remember whatever your brain is thinking we have been programmed where is my program when i develop my program that is spirituality that is my individualistic wisdom and that wisdom has all answers people who have questions amazing literally salute to them very many thanks to them because these questions are where they are stuck why do i ask a question from someone because i don't have answer to the question myself when you are full of answers you have wisdom people are full of questions stop pause block the brain is blocked they are stuck at that question and then they want answer from someone i met many people who give challenges can you answer this i say so sorry i can't you win now their ego will destroy them that's another way of killing someone people do commit suicide so the beauty of understanding lies in knowing i know less there is something or some supreme intelligence controlling the world making this world go around making this in, taking care of this universe who is in me breathing in me i need blessings from that thing and that thing is no thing and from today onwards i stop worrying about whatever my eyes show and i close these and i do not bother i connect with the do not bother i and that means i am connected to the god to the almighty i will be flushed with common sense and common sense will take care of you how do, how do you drive we drive with common sense that is why we don't get accidents it is called 100% idea how can idea be 100% correct 
we drive we will take our vehicle on road we are dri driving with an idea uh, this right side of uh, this car on the right of me is going to take turn from here or oh, he's shaking up his maybe he'll go left or right another motorcycle motorcycle is come ahead of me there's a truck we have we have an idea but it's a hundred percent idea that is common sense we're using common sense that is hundred percent idea an idea can be 99 percent it cannot be perfect there are theorems there are principles principles are solid theorems are make believe so that is where common sense comes into play one who has common sense has all answers that is called wisdom that is for called kripa blessings that is what you know what the brain is meditating of meditation doesn't mean uh, you sit straight you close your eyes do this and then you are running a program you have heard something on youtube and then you are running that program inside you thinking you are meditating you are running a program someone has made you believe you sit straight sit for 30 minutes breathe like this breathe like that you do whatever you will still die you will get sick we are being fed with programs something in, in us is being stimulated let god stimulate our life the one who is breathing in us the one who is making us see life hear whatever voices we listen to making us understand all of you are listening many people on youtube are listening they are interpreting with their own brains that interpreter is the supreme intelligence that is god consciousness that is wisdom that is ether that is what is going to be alive forever in life so we have to convert the information into wisdom oh beautiful beautiful we have to convert the information into wisdom when you stop start uh, just observing the information then you start questioning the information ah once you do that wisdom prevails beautiful and suddenly you get to know the answers you know if you do get angry you have lack of wisdom because that means the brain is angry I, i'm stuck i'm not able to find an answer so we shout we become angry we display anger we display hatred one who has answers how can you make that person angry because that person knows oh that person is doing this because of a reason this is the reason i have the answer you can never get angry anger comes to those people who have no answers they're stuck and that is where ego comes ego stucks ego is very hard it stucks it doesn't flow it is not water it is solid so learn to check yourself your brain is capable or incapable to solve the questions the mysteries the circumstances of life or not if it is not you will be angry you can be angry 10000 times in a day but that means you your brain is stupid that does not mean you are stupid yes happy you have all the brains you're not using it you're not utilizing that section that memory bank you're not opening the lock you have all the brains you can access the akashic records you can do wonders anybody can just become enlightened anytime you can have all the wisdom but you are not looking at that because you're running a program my father used to say this my mother used to say that my village this was to be done and this is how girl should be that is how men should no you have to have wisdom there is your personal program that is wisdom you will get all the answers and what are what is the mind looking for only answers what is the purpose of life look for answers the questions will disappear that is how life becomes amazing so make the goal i will make no goal let life create a goal for me god will decide thank you so much i need to thank you let's finish up the class so nice thanks a lot to everyone all the people in presence and all those who are joining us on youtube feel blessed all the blessings to all of you god bless take care